Hi, you guys. I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing. And today I want to talk to you about where I think the economic growth in the U.S. is headed for this year. Well, in 2021, we saw a phenomenal year in the stock market. Um, man, the, the stocks that we had in our portfolio were up something like 31%. Um, really, really good year. And um, all of it coming from, of course, the big COVID pandemic crash of 2020. Um, so the, the economy has been massively stimulated. A lot of money been poured in there. The first quarter of 2021, GDP growth was 6.4% on an annualized basis. And the second quarter, GDP grew even faster at 6.7%. Since then, it's slowed down a little bit. And now with coronavirus coming on, like this whole new Omicron thing, Persistently high inflation is kicking in now um, and interest rates are becoming a real issue. The Federal Reserve is talking some stuff out there. The economy hasn't quite hit those high growth numbers. And these factors are making some people a little uncertain about the state of the market and what will happen with the economy um, in this next year. So what I want to do is kind of dive into what the U.S. economic growth looks like in 2022, and I think, and how this is going to affect the stock market as best my little fuzzy crystal ball will help. Now, the question would be, I think, really, is will things slow down after, you know, a very, very uh, high growth year in that 6% plus range? And uh, let's kind of find out here. Okay, so following one of the fastest economic recoveries in the history of the planet uh, that we had in 2021, the economy has been impacted by a bunch of stuff uh, created in part by the pandemic. Well, all created in, in by the pandemic, but um, some of it they just didn't expect. Um, these are supply chain disruptions they thought would resolve themselves much quicker. Um, a lot of high demand on, on products and major labor shortages. So these are all really important things that can disrupt the economy. And we're seeing all of them kick in along with a big wave of, uh, of COVID here at the beginning of the year. So although we've seen a lot of economic growth after recovering from 2020, uh, I think we're definitely going to see this whole thing start to settle down this year. Um, one major influence on the economy is that the new coronavirus variant, is, I think it's called Omicron, um, could be very likely to slow down the reopening of the economy. I mean, I'm already making decisions about going out to see my kids based on Atlanta having just massive amounts of, of this virus hitting everybody. I'm, and by the way, I guess that's infilling to a lot of people my age are just not going out there. And some of those people are not going out there permanently. They're like, OK, I, I'm now retired. And now as a result of that, worker shortages, I think, are going to continue to last longer than anybody expected. I mean, prices are going up on wages. You know, it used to be like, oh, fifteen dollars. We get to the new minimum wage. Well, I'm seeing signs everywhere saying we'll start you at 18. We'll start you at 20. And I'm thinking that this is going to continue and that's going to continue to drive inflation. And what it's saying is a lot of people just aren't going back to work. Either they're sick or they've got enough money saved up or they're retired or something. And so what does that all mean for us as investors? You know, what would kind of a slow market growth, a slow economic growth do to the market? Well, we're, we're going to need to kind of balance the risks uh, of economic growth, of inflation, of interest rates going up. And I, you know, some companies are going to grow this year. I think a lot of companies are going to grow this year, but not at the same kind of pace, this sort of torrid pace that we see in uh, so many companies out there. I think we're in a kind of stalling out kind of a year. Um, I know experts are projecting greater economic growth outside the United States because a lot of places have really been slammed down. Uh, particularly China and, uh, is what I'm thinking. And they're suggesting that investors might want to look at durable businesses outside the U.S. that can maintain strong earnings and cash flows. I know I'm certainly doing that. Um, and of course, as a rule one investor, that's already part of our strategy. We look everywhere in the whole world for companies and we just buy ones that we've really learned about that actually meet our requirements, which are pretty severe, which is why we're mostly looking outside the United States right now. We were looking for bargains. Um, so we're pretty prepared for whatever might happen throughout 2022. We've got plenty of cash around and we're, uh, we're ready to take a little bit lower rate of return this next year um, and be prepared for the market to be 
kind of stumbling along and hopefully we'll see some really good things stumble that we want to buy. Now, if you don't already know, what we're looking at, of course, are companies with really good understanding that we understand, you know, we, we really understand the company. They've got a really big moat, they've got good solid management, and we can buy them at a big margin of safety. Those are the major qualities we're looking for. Do we understand the business? Is it a really durable business with good management and is it on sale? That's what we're looking for. Pretty straightforward, right? So these kind of companies are going to be the best companies for 2022's particular risk factors. And that means the risk factor is the market could continue to rocket and we want companies that will benefit from that. The market could tumble. We want companies that are anti-fragile and will benefit from that. So we want companies that are gonna benefit no matter what direction this market goes. And if it goes sideways, fine. Now, in order to balance the risks of COVID, of inflation and interest rates could have on the economy, I think it's just really crucial that you absolutely understand that business, know that it's durable, durable in the sense that it's anti-fragile, right? It's gonna benefit from chaos. It's anti-fragile, it's got really good people running it and we got it on sale. Now, by using these four principles, like what do we call the four M's, you're going to be able to protect your wealth in a way that you just can't in the kind of environment I think we're going to face in the next two or three years. It is impossible to protect yourself given the strategies promoted by most of the financial advisors in the country. You can't, most of them are not sophisticated enough to protect your wealth in a marketplace that could just melt down. So what we want to be able to do is protect wealth, not violate rule number one, which is don't lose money. We want to be sure we don't lose money. And we want to be sure that no matter what the economy is doing, we're going to benefit. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to do that, how to understand those four M's, just head to the link below for our checklist, and that'll help you to invest in what we call wonderful businesses. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys. Where do you all see the economy headed this year? How do you think these changes are going to affect the portfolio and the market? And leave a comment below with your answer. I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching. Now go play. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable for teaching you more about where the economic growth in the U.S. is headed, just like and share the video with your friends. For more resources on how to invest, visit my website, rule1investing.com. Thanks for watching. Now go play.